What is it really like flying with a toddler? How do you guarantee a successful flight? You know what? You can't. The truth is that you can prepare, 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 and still have a shitty flight. But I'll tell you what, the minute that you stop thinking about it as a vacation or as a chore, but instead as an adventure, that's the minute you can start to enjoy flying and traveling with your baby or your toddler. Or you know what? You don't even have to enjoy it. Just know that even if everything goes wrong, it will end. This too shall pass. Your travel day is not going to last forever and adventure awaits you on the other side. We woke up at 4.30 a.m. to catch a 7.30 a.m. flight with our two-year-old son, Dorian. We've flown a lot with our son and we always let him sleep until the moment we're walking out the door. He usually just needs a quick diaper change and he's good to go. We always pack the night before and we have everything we need in a big pile, so all that we need to do is just get dressed, brush our teeth, and go. Our first challenge of the day came at 5 a.m. when our lift that we scheduled the night before canceled on us. This was followed by another six or seven and Uber drivers also canceling on us as we got more and more frantic and frustrated. We are still waiting on the side of the road at 5.15 a.m. We live about 25 minutes from the airport and no Ubers are coming, so we called a good old fashioned taxi cab and he arrived right away. I had ordered breakfast and coffee to our apartment before we caught our taxi, which we ended up eating in the check-in line at the airport. This proved essential because we were cutting it close and didn't have time to stop for food or coffee at the airport. We'll be flying five hours across the country to visit family. We'd already checked in online and only had carry-ons with us, but we still had to wait in the check-in line to check in our car seat. They wrapped it for us, which is nice because we don't have a cover for it and it's new and we needed to gate check our stroller as well. We've made the mistake of not bringing our stroller through the airport before and it's just a lot of stuff to carry with a baby or a toddler. Turns out that this budget airline we're flying does not allow two carry-ons each. Oopsies, you can only bring a small one that fits under your seat. But the lady was really nice and let it slide without charging us. A win! Quick tip for you if you're flying with a car seat, some of them have extra space in the base and we have always used this to stuff extra baby items into and check them for free because car seats fly for free. Extra diapers, wipes, etc. I've heard that some check-in agents are strict about this and will check to make sure you take the stuff out, but this has literally never happened to us. We almost always arrive for our flights four hours early, since having a baby I mean, but we didn't want to wake up earlier than 4.30 a.m. today, so we tried something unusual for us, cutting it close, and it actually all worked out pretty well. The check-in line and security were quite fast and relaxed. We were also in a pretty calm and relaxed mindset, so I feel like that helps a lot. A couple of quick tips for security and packing that I sometimes forget. You can use breast milk bags for sunscreen and medications and other liquids to prevent leaks because they're quite leak proof. They're meant to hold breast milk, so they're really great for putting little liquid items in, even better than baggies. At security in the US and TSA, you can bring milk over 100 milliliters for babies and toddlers, but in Canada, supposedly, that stops at 24 months. So I was a little bit nervous that I wouldn't be able to bring my son's toddler milk through security. However, we didn't have a problem. They just tested it and we were on our way. But I had also brought powdered milk just in case, just in case security wasn't gonna let me pass with my son's milk since he's over two years old now. Over 24 months, I mean. We did Dory's favorite thing at the airport, moving walkways and escalators over and over and over. Who needs airport playgrounds? Not being in the stroller too much is good for burning off energy to hopefully get him to sleep on the plane. As soon as we got to the gate, boarding started, so there was no time to run around like we normally do before getting on the plane. But Dory did walk onto the plane by himself. He was so excited that he sat in the first seat he found. I had to get him up and get him to walk down the aisle. I really wanted to ask if he could take a cockpit picture with the pilots, but I chickened out. Maybe next flight. Have you guys tried this with your kids? I found that the flight attendants were all really nice and the other passengers too. But also I just have so much less anxiety than I used to when traveling with Dory. I'm much more relaxed, so maybe I perceive others as being more relaxed or maybe it was just a good day of flying for us. 
We took off on time, another blessing because I know so many people have had delays on the tarmac or canceled flights lately. We played with a bunch of activities before even getting in the air. I packed them all in this bathroom bag, this toiletries bag, and that came in handy for keeping everything organized. Dory was happy, he had his sleep slash cozy items with him, his binky and his blankie and his milk and a sippy cup that we'd filled at home. We brought two of them with us. Pacifier for his ears during takeoff. He's never really had a problem with ear pain, but I, I always wonder, so I just give it to him just in case. We played a lot, lots of tablet games, which he gets frustrated with doing alone, so we played the tablet too. Yay! Dad did a little diaper change about an hour and a half into the flight and I set up Dory's new blow up toddler bed. It's a blow up footrest that squeezes between the seats and I did it sneakily because I know that some airlines don't allow them and I figure I'd rather beg forgiveness than ask permission when it comes to toddlers and their sleep. Phil and I were both feeling skeptical about it because it was uneven with the seat and we figured he'd roll right off of it, but why not give it a shot? We have some really long flights to Asia and within Asia coming up soon and we wanted to see if this would work. I wasn't too worried about getting him to sleep for his nap because I've learned that the more I want something to happen, like sleep or eating or whatever it might be, the more likely it is to not work. So I just set up the inflatable bed, plan to do our normal bedtime routine, and whatever happens, happens. My plan was basically to cuddle him to sleep. <laughs> what ended up happening is that he played tablet games until he got sick of it, and then he just sort of rolled around in his seat, rubbing his blanket on his face, drinking milk. He wouldn't let me close the window, so I thought that was gonna be a problem, but then suddenly he just sort of fell asleep within minutes, all curled up on his seat, inflatable footrest totally ignored. I snapped his seatbelt over him and covered him with a light blanket because he gets pretty hot usually when he's sleeping. Meanwhile, his dad watched intense action movies or something on his phone and I actually got to sleep a little bit for the first time ever since having a baby. I don't think I've ever slept on the plane with Dory in the last two years. So I know this is a shorter flight at five hours. We've got like a 14, 15 hour flight coming up soon. So maybe I'll be a singing a different tune on the longer flight, stay tuned. We're flying a budget airline today, so they starved us to death. No food, no drink service. We brought food for Dory, but didn't have much for ourselves. We were okay though. A little bit hungry, but happy about how smooth the flight was going. We've never had any terrible flights with Dory, but we've had some not so great flights. There were a couple of times that I sat in the middle seat with him on my lap and my husband seated 20 rows behind us. Thanks Ryanair! But so many things went right for us today on this flight. It wasn't full, people seemed really chill, everything was on time, and all of that helps so much. Little hiccups can make things feel a lot harder when you're traveling with a baby or a toddler. Make everything feel worse than it really is. No one sitting in front of Dory except a kid on and off really helped as well. I found flying with him at 24 months much different than flying with him when he was 12 months old or even 21 months old. The first thing is that we seem to need way less stuff. Maybe because I've flown a lot with him or because he had his own seat this time. This is his first time not flying as a lap infant or maybe because we were all together, I wasn't alone with him. Whatever it was, this just felt so much more relaxing. We got ready to get off, landing was pretty uneventful. Unless we're in a hurry, we usually wait until the plane is almost empty to get off. Dory likes to say goodbye to everybody. We had kind of a crappy surprise deplaning at the plane door because the airline didn't seem to know where our stroller was and initially they told us to just go to the carousel and get our stroller, even though we had gate checked it. Um, there was a, a lot of miscommunication and this isn't the first time that something like this has happened to us. We've actually had our car seat lost for days, really ruined one of our trips before. So I highly recommend not traveling with a valuable car seat or a valuable stroller unless you know you're gonna be able to take it on the plane with you, such as the strollers that fold up and go into the overhead bin. Otherwise, I think it's a really good idea to get a secondhand or cheap stroller car seat to travel with. So that's what we, were, we did here. We, got a, we brought our secondhand stroller with us and it wasn't too big of a deal but it would have been annoying to not have a place to put our baby into to take him uh, through the airport. We consider all of this really good practice for a huge trip that we have coming up in the next couple of weeks. My husband Phil is a research scientist studying coral and so we're gonna be 
heading to Indonesia for the next three or four months. The whole family is coming along and so I hope you'll join us for whatever that adventure is going to look like over the next few weeks and few months. Thank you so much for letting me take you along today for this little airport airplane journey. I'm not lying when I say it was actually a lot of fun and I hope that you can also have a really fun travel day with your own babies and toddlers. Alright guys, I'll see you soon.